Hi everyone, I'm Allison Smith. We are so happy to have you here with us from the EnergyCast studios in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Let's take a look at August's top stories. As some of Oak Ridge's most challenging waste is finally on the move, we take you to Texas where crews are melting down decades old sodium shields for permanent disposal and meet the next generation leading cleanup in Oak Ridge. These rising stars are building on the foundation left by their mentors and advancing EM's mission in a big way. Plus, it is hot and humid. While most of us are able to sit in the air conditioning, some field crews are working in the thick of it. We'll show you how they stay safe when temperatures soar. As some of Oak Ridge's most challenging waste is finally on the move, OREM and UCOR teamed up with a private company to permanently dispose of sodium shields, reducing risk on the reservation. We got an inside look at the first shipment and the innovative demonstration process, transforming these shields into a form safe for disposal. These large aluminum and steel containers have sat in storage for decades. Now they're finally getting a one-way ticket out of Oak Ridge. I think any time we find a path for a waste stream that had no path previously uh, is very exciting. The sodium shields were left over from radiation research in the 1960s and 70s at ORNL's tower shielding facility. The shields contain highly reactive metals, which made them extremely difficult to dispose of safely. Sodium itself is a reactive metal. And so they do present a risk from an emergency management perspective for this site. Uh, reduction of these sodium shields off of our footprint allows us to reduce the risk uh, to the facility and to the general public for ha containing and managing this hazardous inventory. To reduce that risk, two of the shields were recently shipped to Veolia's facility in Andrews, Texas. A move that took months of planning careful packaging, and a special transport permit just to get them on the road. Once there, crews use GeoMelt technology, a high temperature process that heats the shields to more than 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit. It turns the reactive metal into a stable glass form for safe, permanent disposal using a process known as vitrification. We know that the, the treatment technology has proven itself with waste from Idaho. Uh, so as soon as they can show that they can successfully treat our waste, we'll open the door for the remaining inventory. The shields range in size from 30 to 30,000 pounds, so every shipment will be different. With the success of the demonstration project, additional shields are scheduled for shipment and processing. The Department of Energy is looking for locations to use federal lands for an AI data center. DOE has narrowed its list from 16 potential federal sites to four, with the Oak Ridge Reservation being among those finalists. The private companies will be invited to these sites to explore the viability of new AI data centers and energy infrastructure. The announcement follows strong interest in DOE's earlier request for information, which helped in deciding which sites to choose. The move supports presidential orders aimed at boosting AI leadership and cutting energy costs. More details are expected in the coming months, with private partners possibly being chosen by the end of the year. This is a team effort that's paying off. OREM, UCOR, and Kairos Power joined forces to keep a major energy project on track while recycling tons of metal. A Kairos Power is building its Hermes Low Power Demonstration Reactor at the East Tennessee Technology Park. The land once housed the massive uranium enrichment buildings that were demolished as part of OREM's cleanup efforts. Early work for the foundation of the Hermes project involved deep digs requiring the removal of old underground electrical infrastructure. Working with OREM and UCOR, Kairos Power confirmed all of the excavated material was safe for normal disposal. Much of it could even be recycled. A Kairos Power ended up recycling more than 70,000 pounds of lead and copper. It was very tedious because the, the duct banks were uh, surrounded by concrete. And so uh, our vendors, LADA, had to take, and, and our uh, contractors for construction, Barnard, had to separate the concrete 
from the conductors. And that was done over here in the laydown area. So we were very methodical, separated it out, pulled the conductors out, put a, cut them in five foot lengths, put them in these super sacks, and that's what's being carried off. The partnership saved money by avoiding costly disposal options, generated revenue from recycling, and helped Cairo's power stay on schedule to bring its advanced reactor technology online. All right, crews, they have been hard at work this month at Oak Ridge National Laboratory, tackling a major step in cleanup progress. The first of five hot cells is now out of building 3038. This facility sits in an area known as Isotope Row, where crews are working to clear away old labs and make room for modernization of the site's central campus area. Removing the hot cells is the last big hurdle before demolition. The work is not easy. Researchers use these shielded enclosures to work on highly radioactive materials for decades. Clearing the first cell opens the door for crews to safely remove the remaining four. Uh, for years, OREM employees have been a driving force behind some of Oak Ridge's biggest transformations. Uh, together, they've set ambitious goals and served as trailblazers showing what's possible. With many of these experienced co-workers retiring in recent months, a new generation is stepping into key roles, applying lessons from these mentors and carrying that legacy forward. EnergyCast's Sierra Hellemans has more. Only a week after receiving her bachelor's degree in environment and sustainability, Alex Schenk began her internship with the Oak Ridge Office of Environmental Management. Two years later, she's been named the deputy project manager for Alpha 2, the largest and highest priority demolition project underway at the Y-12 National Security Complex. It's given me, again, like I've said, a lot of confidence because, you know, my managers have trusted me and said, Alex, you have the skills and capabilities to do this. Yes, it will be a learning experience for you, but we trust that you're a quick learner and able to do it. And I think that's why I've grown so much. Like Shank, Abby Hill and Sam Scheffler also joined OREM's federal ranks in recent years and have been tapped to contribute in big ways. Both are East Tennessee natives who studied chemical engineering and both are using that knowledge to help their hometown region. Scheffler is leading groundwater remediation efforts to finish the final phase of ETTP's cleanup, while Hill's responsibilities are helping pave the way for companies to locate at ETTP to bring in new investments, new jobs, and new opportunities. We're finally at a point where there are private landowners that we were able to transfer land to that are developing really large scale projects to support that nuclear renaissance through small modular reactors and otherwise. So I think it's really cool to see where we are now. Their East Tennessee roots continue to shape their dedication. I am a fifth generation East Tennessean on both sides of my family. And so Cleanup is really important to me in that we need to be able to protect the areas that we have and the resources that we have here and help clean them up and make sure that they're prepared for younger generations. Mentors also helped her recognize the Oak Ridge community as one of DOE's most unique and greatest resources. If DOE did not have the community support that it has in Oak Ridge, none of this would be as successful as it is. We have people who want to see new nuclear come in to ETTP, and we have people who want to have input on our projects. And the other piece of knowledge that all of these people have passed on to me is also we would not be anywhere without the skilled staff that we have. With a mission aimed at benefiting the community they care about so deeply, these early career employees are excited to build on the accomplishments of those who came before them and start a legacy of their own. And no summer slackers here. Our team met up with students who have been busy getting valuable career experience. 41 students from 10 different colleges took part in UCOR's summer intern program. They spent 12 weeks getting hands-on experience supporting major projects at ORNL and Y12. As students say, this summer was more than just a resume builder. I think being able to work in a nuclear field is something super special. Not a lot of people get to do that. 
So there's a lot of uh, like safety concerns that go with it and being entrusted to be able to be a deployed intern and be in that environment all the time and learn about that safety culture and just the history of being out here has been super, super special for me. Since 2022, 36 students in this program joined the company full time. And this class showed their impact off site as well, collecting more than 6,000 food items for Second Harvest Food Bank. Builds a sort of camaraderie with each other, knowing that like you are making a difference, even if in a, even in an office setting like this, especially with it being an environmental. So I feel like overall we are in a setting where we are giving back to people. So this is just another example. The donations support the Food for Kids program, providing meals to thousands of children across the region. Most of us can beat the heat with an ice cream cone or maybe a splash pad for the kids. But for workers on the Oak Ridge Reservation, it is just hot temperatures and hard work. Their cool down plan looks a little bit different because they can't just grab a cone and call it a day. Picture this. The sun is shining and it's close to triple digit temperatures. But these workers, they're suited up in full safety gear and heading into a building with no air conditioning. You'll lose several pounds in water weight from a dive in one of these facilities. Um, it's uh, basically like being in a sauna. There's no running from the heat when this is your office. There's nothing more unforgiving than the East Tennessee heat and humidity. That's why crews here rely on high tech help. Armbands that track heart rate, body temperature, and exertion levels in real time. When we suit up in the protective equipment, you lose the ability uh, for your sweat to be effective. So it's especially important that our folks that are working inside take those routine breaks and we really keep a close eye on those exertion levels by way of our remote monitoring. Breaks and hydration are key. Heat stress prevention includes a work rest regimen and lots of water. Crews start early too, sometimes 5 a.m. to beat the worst of the heat. Hydration is the name of the game. Um, what you do over the weekend matters. Uh, what you do, what you eat for breakfast, all those things that you do on the personal front, they matter and play uh, a, a huge role in the body's ability to uh, beat the heat. And when the heat really gets to workers, there are other quick, cool solutions. We have forearm immersion coolers in some of the project areas that are higher risk for a, an elevated heat load where folks can go by and get a dunk just like jumping in the swimming pool. And uh, just that little bit of uh, cooling you get uh, from having your hands and forearms immersed in uh, uh, cool water, it makes a big difference. The progress achieved at Oak Ridge's cleanup sites is made possible by these men and women who suit up and brave the heat every day. But when the day is done, you can bet they've earned more than just one scoop. Backpacks, supplies, and big smiles in Oak Ridge. Local groups came together to help kids start the school year ready to learn. The Scarborough Community Center was packed as the NAACP hosted a back to school fair. A kids lined up for free supplies and health checks. UCOR joined the fund, donating backpacks and school gear, while teaming up with OEM to talk with families about the cleanup mission and future STEM careers. By the end of the day, hundreds of students left with everything they need to crush the school year. And some exciting stories are coming your way next month, starting with the grand opening of the K-25 Interpretive Center. Get ready for stunning views and a deeper look at the legacy of the K-25 site. We'll have that and much more. And don't forget to follow us on our social media accounts. We post this show on our YouTube channel. Plus, if you liked a topic we covered here, we often have more on it over there. You can also follow EM News on our Facebook, LinkedIn, and X accounts. Thank you so much for joining us. New episodes come out the last Wednesday of the month. You can watch on air or online, same places as always. We'll see you next month from the EnergyCast studio in Oak Ridge.